So over the weekend, I was lucky enough to be invited to Sydney for a hands-on playtest with Star Wars Outlaws. So in today's video, we're going to be diving into my initial impressions, both the good and the bad of the game and everything I got to experience. And if there's anything you guys would like to know about the game, make sure to leave it down in the comments below and I will do my best to respond to all of you to get you guys the answers that you are seeking. Now, before I get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Ubisoft and more specifically Laura from Ubisoft ANZ uh, for inviting me to try out the game early and give me this opportunity. Obviously, these things don't come along for everyone, so I do really appreciate it. Um, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts with everyone here. Now, in the playtest, as well as some of the other creators, myself and some members of the media outlets were lucky enough to get a presentation from two of the developers that worked on Star Wars Outlaws. And they got to bring us some really cool details about the game and what we can expect. And then I did also get to interview them for about 10 minutes, ask them a few questions about the game, which I'm gonna post in a video later this week. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you want to see that in a later video. But after the presentation, we got our hands on the game for about an hour and 15 minutes. Some of us got a little bit more time with the game. Sammy, I'm looking at you. I know he was the last one playing, so lucky for him, he got that extra bit of time to play the game. Um, but yeah, we got about an hour and 15 minutes to play through the early stages on Tashara, um, and that's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Now, I know a lot of people are skeptical about Star Wars Outlaws, whether it's because it's a Ubisoft game or because it's a Star Wars game, because the fact that it has no lightsabers, but Honestly, I think most of you should probably hold your opinions until you actually play the game yourselves. It's one thing to go based off just gameplay that you've seen or the opinions of others, but I truly think that, you know, the experience in itself of actually playing it and being in that world is very different just to then just seeing somebody else play it. So I see a lot of comments already downplaying this game. And to be honest, getting your hands on to actually play it is so different. One of the first things I found with my time playing the game was how good it looked graphically as well as the level design and the world building that's actually gone into the game i feel like it was just so beautiful and i found myself getting really easily immersed into the world even though we only got to play such a small segment of the game so that's the thing that i kind of think stood out to me immediately as we started playing was just how beautiful everything looked and keeping in mind we did play on some really really nice pcs that were in the actual area that we were all testing this out but i'm sure it's going to look great on console as well with the capabilities of the ps5 and the new xboxes i think this game is going to look great no matter where you're playing it now as i mentioned earlier we did play this first segment on tashara kind of inside miragana city and the surrounding lands and something i wanted to do as soon as i got onto the speeder bike was do a quick bit of exploring before heading into the main story quest so I hopped on a speeder and flew around the desert for a little bit to see what I could find. And within two minutes, I found an Imperial encampment, which, you know, I was able to break into and take out a couple of stormtroopers, get inside, steal some credits, some materials, and some information that I was actually able to use later on to build up some reputation with one of the syndicates. On top of this, I did find some collectibles as well. So I actually found a chest as I was flying around the desert which led to a cosmetic for Nyx in the form of a yellow scarf. Now, yes, that is right. We are going to be able to customize Nyx as well as Kay's appearances. And this yellow scarf, it may seem like something tiny, but it was a really cool thing to find as like my first real, I guess, collectible or cosmetic that I was able to find on my own. And it was off the beaten path. You know, it wasn't tied directly related to the story. It was actually a result of exploring the open world. So that was really fun. And those kind of things are something that I actually love in a game like this is being able to go off to, you know, maybe away from the main story, same as Jedi Survivor when, you know, we first found the mullet appearance for Cal. Like something like that to me is such a fun little detail. It just adds another level to the exploration in this game, which is really, really fun. Now, after finding these things, I did actually move on to the main story because I knew we only had limited time. But to be honest, flying the speeder around, it felt really fun to ride on. And the controls were responsive and being able to fire at enemies while on the speeder, it added another dimension to the gameplay as well. And um, you do also get a dodge mechanic, so you can hit left button or right button or L1, R1, depending which controller you're using. And it will actually dodge left to right for you. So if you have enemies chasing you, 
trying to shoot you down you know this is something that you can use to help avoid that blaster fire that is incoming um so the speeder felt really good just with the small amount of gameplay i only got about a minute on the speeder or two minutes on the speeder and yeah from what i got to feel it was great now at this point i got to miragana city and the first thing again i was blown away by the level of detail that has gone into the city streets Miragana, if you're not up to date, is like an underworld setting. And to be honest, I was walking around it and it looked like I was in the lower levels of Coruscant straight out of a movie. And it looked so good. And saying this, like I said, we're playing on really powerful PCs, but I'm sure the console version is still going to look great. Now, the main story mission is something we've kind of already seen before. So to me, I was more focused on how the game felt and not so much what was actually happening in the story. So Let's talk a little bit about the gameplay feel. During my playtime, the thing that became most apparent about the gameplay was how useful Nyx actually is and just how much you actually have to use him. Nyx not only can help you distract or attack enemies, he can also retrieve items for you like other blasters and credits or materials that are in a different area. But on top of all of that, he can also be used to help traverse through the map um, he can open vents for you, he can shut off fans so you can get through a certain area, and doing other things to help you, like scanning the area for things to interact with to help you move forward. So it feels like using Nyx is going to be a huge part of the game, especially the scan. So anyone that knows, you know, other games that have a scan feature, so like Hogwarts Legacy with Revelio or Stellar Blade, where you're able to actually just scan the immediate area, Nyx can pretty much do the same thing. And I feel like a lot of us are going to be using that when we get stuck or we don't quite know where to go. This is going to be a huge help. Now, one other thing worth noting is that you should keep an eye on Nyx in the open world because he can actually lead you to some of the rarer collectibles in the game, which may be tucked away on a hidden path. When this happened to me during my playtime, there was dialogue between Nyx and Kay where she asked him, did you find something? Which then followed with a small arrow indicator on the screen. I was allowed to walk to a certain direction, follow the path that I was greeted with, and then when we did get to the end of it, there was a cinematic view of the terrain and the surrounding landscape, and I was presented with a reward, which I thought was pretty cool, and it was a reward that is specific to that area. So anyone that's doing something like a 100% achievement or a collectible like trophy grind or anything like that, these are going to be the type of things that pop trophies inside the game, so that's something you're going to want to keep an eye on. Next up, let's talk about the gunplay because I have a few varying thoughts on this and I think there are a few things that can be cleaned up. Star Wars Outlaws is obviously a third person shooter and in a third person shooter, it can feel kind of strange for someone who is used to playing FPS games. Coming back to a third person perspective after playing so much COD and other FPS games lately, it took me a minute to adjust. But in saying that, we played on controller during this session and the aim assist felt very snappy. So it was pretty easy to take out enemies once you got used to it. It's not something that it's going to require a high level of skill and accuracy because, again, the aim assist does a lot of the controlling for you. If you're playing on PC, I just feel like you're going to not quite have an easier time with playing this game. It feels very much so like Jedi Survivor did where controller was heavily favored and you know, those that play on mouse and keyboard might not get the same experience. So even if you are playing this game on PC, I would still suggest using a controller, whether that's an Xbox or a PlayStation controller or, you know, whatever you have to use. I think this is going to be the way to go with playing this game. Now, Kay's blaster during this segment didn't really have any upgrades yet. So it took a few shots to take out an enemy. But once you did so, you could go and pick up the enemy blaster rifle that they had just dropped and it had a limited amount of shots for you to use. For example, I took an A300 rifle off an enemy, which, you know, would take out enemies in two to three shots rather than four to five from K's blaster. And by doing so, it actually helped me take out a lot of enemies much, much faster, allowing me to progress through the game easier. I also tried a sniper rifle, but very briefly, I only got to take two shots with it, which it felt great being able to one shot enemies from anywhere. Kay's ability also felt really smooth to lock onto multiple enemies at once. This was activated by pushing in both joysticks at the same time and then selecting the enemies you'd like to target with the right button or R1. When doing this ability, you don't have to be like right on top of the enemy as such. 
that you're wanting to select. It does give you a little bit of leeway if you're slightly off to the left or right from that target, but it will still select them, making it easier for those of us that aren't super accurate. Changing pace though, one thing I didn't like, however, and this could just be because we were playing on an early build of the game, is that the secondary blasters that you can pick up from other enemies would be dropped anytime you did anything. For example, when I grabbed the sniper, I took out two enemies and then after taking them out, I went to open up a vent and upon opening that vent, it dropped the weapon and I didn't have it anymore. And so the same thing happened on performing other actions as well. So I hope that that's something that's cleaned up upon final release because I don't want to have to have worked to get these better weapons and then going back in afterwards to try and use them and they're not there because I accidentally dropped them on the ground somewhere else. That would just be painful to have to sort of rinse, repeat, picking them up and putting them through different actions and going back and doing it all over again. So I hope that gets cleaned up. Another bug I did notice was just a simple audio bug, but it did happen multiple times during my playtime. So I'm going to mention it here in this video in hopes that it gets out to the right people and it gets fixed. Or if it's something that they're not aware of, then they can work to do it before the final release. But some of the audio was repeated. For example, upon defeating an enemy, the death sound that they would make would repeat constantly for about two minutes, even if I had moved to a new area, which was pretty frustrating. So hopefully that can be fixed too. It's not exactly a pleasant sound when an enemy gets taken out and for that to be repeating for two minutes over and over, it actually did get quite annoying, um, even though I was in a completely separate area of the map to where it first occurred. So I spoke to Sammy and Aussie Jedi as well to see if they had the same issues with the audio and they said they didn't so it could have just been you know unlucky on my part but hopefully it's something that does get fixed and isn't actually in the final version of the game next up for those wondering it seemed pretty easy to gain a reputation with some of the syndicates uh and you know one simple decision during dialogue can put you into good standing with crimson dawn for example which is the route that i took uh, the reason I decided to do this is I'd seen the gameplay from the section that we were playing already. I already had an idea of what was coming next. So getting in good siding with Crimson Dawn allowed me to pass into an area that I otherwise would have had to break in. So this helped me kind of bypass that break in segment and I could just walk through the front door and be in the next area that I needed for the story mission. I think the reputation system is going to be huge, not just because of the rewards that are tied to it. But we also found out from the developers that the factions all give extra traits for K as well. I chose to gain reputation with Crimson Dawn, like I mentioned earlier, but that was purely because I knew it would allow me to progress through the story a little faster. And it kind of seems like repetability or I guess replayability as such is going to be great in terms of being able to choose different syndicates on each playthrough and who you would favor and what you would prefer to get. Or even if you want, you know, all of the, I guess, unlockable things that you can get through the progression system you can change what reputation you have throughout by doing different side quests and siding with different people that way you can kind of cover all of the bases with each of the factions now really quick at this point if you guys are new here to the channel and enjoying this content please jump down below and subscribe to the channel as we are extremely close to 50,000 subscribers and I would love to reach that goal going into the launch of Star Wars Outlaws. So anyone that does jump down there and drop a sub, please let me know in the comments because I do appreciate it and I would love to thank you. Anyways, moving on, I wanted to talk about the sheer size of these planets. I briefly mentioned it earlier with what you can expect from the open world. Mirigana City alone had NPCs everywhere that you could talk to. One of which, you know, can lead to an expert to help level up some of your skills and unlock new things. Others would give you information that you could also then tell to someone else in one of the syndicates to help boost your reputation with them. So pretty much everywhere you go in these cities, there is something to do, whether it's the main story quests or side quests, or even just NPCs that you can talk to to get information. There is a ton of options here for you to actually just explore, talk to different people, experience different things. And I think that's going to keep us coming back and have us playing this game for hours on end. One thing that I did notice, and this is actually about the settings and something that I really appreciate, Star Wars Outlaws also features like a lock picking system, which is a pretty common puzzle feature in a lot of games. And honestly, when I found out about this, I was concerned because I'm someone who doesn't really have the patience to be sitting here 
timing inputs just to unlock a door. Luckily for me and players like myself, the devs understand that there are other people that don't appreciate these kind of mini games and they've implemented a setting where you can actually turn off the lockpick mini game, allowing you to just press an input whenever you feel like it and it will unlock the door for you. Safe to say I immediately turned off the mini game when I started my play session and it made it so much more enjoyable for me just allowing for the game to flow better instead of sitting there getting frustrated that I couldn't get the timing of this mini game right simply just to unlock a door to progress into the next part of the story. I think this is something that developers need to do more often realizing that not everyone plays games exactly the same way and not everyone has the same patience or the same desire to do things like this in a game. So I'm really appreciative of something like that because that's just the attention to detail of understanding every player base as such and what different type of people are going to be looking for out of this game. So overall, how would I rate Star Wars Outlaws? Well, to be honest, it's kind of difficult to rate it after only playing for just over an hour, but if I had to give it something right now, it would be around a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10, but I think that does have room to move up once I have experienced more of the game. Sammy Boy made a really, really good point in his video. You know, a game with the gameplay itself can be a 7 out of 10, but, you know, if you're immersed into the world of something and you love it and, you know, you just feel like it really represents what Star Wars is, that game can then become a 10 out of 10 for a certain person. He used the Hogwarts Legacy example of, you know, they may have been an 8 out of 10 game, but if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, just the fact that they made the world so accurate to what it is in the movies, it made that game a 10 out of 10 for a lot of people. So I think I agree with him in saying that Star Wars Outlaws can do the exact same here. It may not be game of the year, it may not be a 10 out of 10 right now, but to some people, this game has the potential to be a 10 out of 10. If I had to break it down, I think the graphics were pretty close to a 10 out of 10 in this game. Like it looked incredible. Everything from the worlds to the cosmetics and everything in between, it really did look a 10 out of 10. If it wasn't a 10, like it was a 9.5, like it was right up there. The gunplay again was good, but not great. Again, I hope they're able to fix the secondary blasters being dropped all the time. And, you know, the story for me, it's quite difficult to rate it right now because we've only played one mission, but I think as a Star Wars fan, I will enjoy it nonetheless. And, you know, just seeing the story develop and evolve and Kay's character development throughout the actual missions and everything that we do in this game, I'm really interested to see how that goes. And I think the story could really be great. But I know some people are only interested in Star Wars if there's lightsabers, and I totally get that, but don't fully dismiss this game right now just because of that reason. We don't know what's going to happen in the story. Obviously, this isn't going to be a Jedi game or anything along those lines. But again, we have Jedi Survivor. We have Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi 3 is on the way. And if you want to live the Jedi or Sith fantasy, there are games to do that. This is not what this game is going to be. But it doesn't mean we won't see a lightsaber at all. Who knows? There may be something that pops up. We don't know what the story is going to look like yet. And the only way to truly know that is to play it and experience it for ourselves. I will be interested to try some of the space combat as well as explore more of the open world when I get hands on with the game next, but overall right now I am excited to get into more of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it gave you an idea of what is to come. And honestly, once I've played more of the game, this rating could go up or down, but for right now that's what I have. I don't really see it going down unless there is a ton of issues on launch, which, you know, let's be honest, it's possible. Look at Jedi Survivor last year, everything went great in the playtest and then when it launched it was a buggy mess and frames were dropping and there was a bunch of issues so hopefully that doesn't happen here and we get a smooth launch but this could definitely go up for me. I don't see it staying at a 7.5, I think the more I get to rip into this game and you know experience it as a whole I think that 7.5 is going to go up to potentially an 8.5, 9 out of 10. Um, I don't know if it will quite reach a 10 out of 10 for me personally but there are definitely people out there that I think this game has the potential to do that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up down below for me. And if you want more videos on Star Wars Outlaws or any Star Wars games in general, you can click on one of the options on screen now to watch some more of my content. But with that said, I am going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching and may the force be with you always.